Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here thanks for joining me I'm Katie and today we're having another look at some budget art supplies these are the Koinor Travel Watercolour Set and they are a tablet pa based paint similar to the ones from the works however I've got higher hopes for these now compared to your usual watercolour pans which are in the little individual pans and they're a little bit tacky to touch these are completely dry and they repel the water again but I've kind of figured out why they do that and that might not necessarily be a bad thing but if you think about it whilst they're in storage or whilst they're in the shops or in the warehouses they have to remain pretty waterproof otherwise they're gonna expire and go all nasty so I'm going to forgive them for repelling the water a little bit there because that's obviously going to preserve the paints themselves. Now after activating these and adding them to some water, I was absolutely shocked by how pigmented they are. I was really surprised. Just to let you know, these paints cost me £4 off Amazon, they're, they're not much and you get absolutely loads of colours. You don't get the colour names, but that's not the end of the world, they're just absolutely fine for chucking in your art kit and painting on the go. And yes, I know you can get other watercolour pans, but for £4, these are alright. I mean, look, we have we have a good colour payoff and that's what you want if you just want to get some quick information down for, for a quick sketch. They're okay for that. Am I saying they're Daniel Smith? Absolutely not. But for what they cost and for how you can use them, they're not bad. I thought I'd have a little play around with these and see if I can paint something semi-decent with them. And I thought as well I'd do a couple of tests just to see how they behaved. So the paper I'm using is the Honeymool 425 GSM. It's what I use for the Himi horoscopes and it's one of my favourite papers because it's just really nice and thick and it's slightly textured but not over the top. Now they kind of layered up okay, they made the colour more vibrant but any differences in colour weren't that apparent and they bloomed really nicely as well which surprised me because the works ones didn't. I thought I'd do the salt test as well because these colours were quite vibrant so I thought anything that's going to be removed from here it's, it's not going to make a huge impact and I was thinking it could leave a nice texture. However, upon removing it, I think it might have just pulled off a little bit too much of the pigment. And again, that might just be down to how these watercolours are presented. They are a tablet watercolour, they're going to be very dry, and I think a lot of the colour was removed because of that. However, it was not a disaster, and I kind of liked the texture that was there. However, so much stuff kept coming off. It took a few attempts to make sure no more colour and salt was left on there. That shouldn't have been on there. For single layers though, again, the colour payoff was really good, and the colours that were in this particular selection all worked together really nicely. You can get them with more paints in, I think this is one of the smaller sets that I bought, but there are plenty of colours to go at. Now for the painting itself, I did do this a few weeks back, I've only just got round to doing the voiceover and putting it up on here, so my, my perspective skills aren't great, but I did stylize this and I'm not using that as an excuse. I've been watching the Moomins a lot just lately and I'm, I just wanted to get some Moomin vibes on here with the trees and the background and the colours I was using. But again, it layered up really nicely for adding the stronger colours on top. I don't think anything beneath them is going to show through. However, when layering the paint, it did sit nicely. It didn't reactivate anything dramatically and it didn't interfere with anything. It, it was nice. The paint sat quite nicely. I was very surprised by these. Now, there was an absence of purple in this palette, which left me with a bit of a predicament. Now, I, I do like a pre-mixed purple, I'm not going to lie. I, I like mixing my own, but if there's a pre-mixed one, that's great because I don't want muddy colours. However, mixing my own, it it, it was quite it was quite pleasant. It, they mixed together really nicely, and the coats I had on the fox here 
are really nice and even and, and I can't grumble at it. Again, I would say these are more like a tablet gouache rather than them being a watercolour, but they, they behave really nicely. If you're just going to do one layer or if you're going to work into a wet layer, they're all right. I can't grumble. They were four pounds. They were okay. Now, I did notice that these colours did dry a little lighter than how they went down on their initial application and again I partially expected this because looking at the tablets in the in the little pan set they are quite light and once they're activated the water makes them go darker so you do get a rough idea of how it's going to work out and well this is why we swatch things as well so we know how that colour is going to look. The black paint included in this is more of a browny black rather than a bluey black that I'm used to. So if you're going to go for those lighter tones expecting or perhaps mixing up your own version of a Payne's Grey, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using the black for that one. However, if you're going to use it as a singular colour and just to add details where you just want it to be black and not interact with the other colours too much, I don't think it's too bad. I don't think it's too bad at all. Now some of the downsides to this, because I have been a, a very positive poly about all of this, yes they are a little bit chalky but again as I've mentioned a couple of times they seem more like a tablet gouache than a watercolour. I think if you use them on thin paper and too thickly there may be a risk of it actually coming off the page but again it's just down to the nature of the paint. I did avoid using very thin washes here because it didn't seem like the type of paint that would behave well with a thin wash. I think you'd get too many of the wrong kind of textures. Now I'm quite aware that everyone has got a different price range for their art materials and I totally absolutely 100% respect that and the purpose I'm doing these really is so you don't waste your money on cheap supplies and be disappointed by them. I'd class these as a cheap supply however they're not a bad supply to work with if you want a good colour payoff. Are you going to be able to get watercolour techniques and, and learn more about watercolours with these? Probably not, not really, but for something where you just need to add a vibrant splash of colour or if you're colouring quite flatly or if you want to just mix them colours while the paint's still wet on the page, then absolutely. I like these because they are vibrant and comparing them to the works ones which weren't vibrant at all and I really worked those paints these are good you get a little mixing tray which is also the lid I like how portable they are and again they they I, I kind of like them I'm, I don't feel bad for saying that now it did come with a white watercolour but I avoided swatching that because number one it's not really going to show up on white paper and number two my experience is they get all nasty and dirty and horrible eventually they get contaminated with the other colours and because they are a dry watercolour tablet it's going to soak them colours in and stay horrible and nasty forever so I did use a little bit on the white parts of the fox but it didn't really do much and any highlights I chose to add were done with the Uniball Signo white gel pen marker. What a mouthful to say that was. So in conclusion the all important question is would I use these again? Yes I think I would. I think I'd probably take them to life drawing to use for the quick sketches that I do Perhaps not for a longer pose where I'd want to work into it more, but for five, ten minute poses, definitely, yeah, they'd be great for that. I haven't got a problem with that at all. Would I use them for a more intricate painting? Probably not as a watercolour, but maybe as a gouache. I think if these were pitched as being gouache or as a poster paint, Absolutely, and I haven't got a problem with using poster paints. I like a good quality poster paint. I love the Nicker poster paints, and how many times have I said poster paint? But I don't mind using them. I, I like treat them like gouache, only more pigmented, and they sit on the paper a little differently. 
so yeah I'd probably use these as a poster paint or a gouache but as a watercolour maybe not just because they just don't quite behave like a watercolour would you can do a thin single wash and it'll be okay but you can't build layers up you get a good colour payout but again though you can't build layers on top because they're quite opaque actually but that is just my opinion and you are free to think what you like this is just me demonstrating them for you anyway you lovely lot i do hope you found this useful i hope you've enjoyed it and please let me know your thoughts in the comments if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and of course if you've enjoyed this video a thumbs up is always a thumbs up in my eyes anyway i will see you on the next one bye